Hi there, Happy New Year and thank you for watching the first farming forecast of 2021. Well, while weather wasn't always the biggest story in 2020, there were a few record-breaking uh, months and periods out there. We saw the wettest February on record across the UK, as well as the sunniest spring, the most sunshine um, on record across spring as well. So there was some interesting weather stories uh, right the way through uh, 2020. Um, a bit more close to, to present, this is we showed this um, rainfall anomaly map uh, a few weeks ago showing November and how generally it was below average across many eastern and southern areas. Compare that with the most recent month, December just gone, quite a contrast um, in terms of the amount of rainfall places saw. You can see many eastern and central places are in these blue colours um, with above average rainfall, particularly so across parts of East Anglia, North East England uh, and Eastern so Scotland where many places saw almost two times um, or more, uh, twice as much or more, uh, the amount of rainfall they'd normally see. So quite a wet month uh, for many places. Uh, you can see some western high ground areas are in these brown colours, so slightly below average uh, for their rainfall. It was still quite wet, uh, but they did see slightly uh, a lower amount than they would normally expect to see um, through December. So more close to, to what we've been seeing over the past couple of days, this is the setup that's been over the UK uh, yesterday and uh, through Sunday as well. We've had high pressure to the northwest of us um, and these areas of low pressure to the south uh, and across the Mediterranean. And that's been driving this fairly breezy northeasterly flow across southern Britain. And you can see it's brought quite a few wintry showers down the east coast, around the south coast as well. Um, there's been quite a few showers in some places. And some places have seen quite a few showers on top of each other, one after the other. And that's led to some quite decent rainfall accumulations over the past couple of days. So this is the rainfall accumulated from uh, Sunday through until uh, midday Monday and you can see many places down the eastern side have seen something like 15 to 25 millimeters of rain even across parts of Kent and southeast England uh, as well so quite a wet uh, couple of days um, in the east further west you can see it was much drier um, none of the showers really making it that far far west many places stayed completely dry bar the odd shower um, so a real east-west contrast in the amount of rainfall we've seen um, over the past couple of days. Now looking forward for the next couple of days, this is today, Tuesday, and you can see it's a fairly similar setup to what it's been um, for the past couple as well. We've had high pressure to the northwest, uh, this northeasterly flow bringing um, a scattering of wintry showers down the east coast um, and a little bit further inland. Um, and that's uh, through Tuesday, that's, that was what was going on. Into Wednesday, we do see that high move away to the east. We begin to lose this northeasterly flow um, so a lower risk of showers during the day Wednesday. There could still be the odd one that just clips the coast, but generally it will turn drier uh, for many southern parts uh, during the day Wednesday. Uh, but that's ahead of this front which is moving in from the northwest, which is going to turn to fairly widespread snow across parts of Scotland and parts of Ireland as well. Um, you can see that pushing in there. So turning more unsettled from the northwest, but perhaps turning slightly drier um, in the south. Now we've seen some fairly sharp frosts in the western side um, over the past couple of days, but eastern areas haven't seen temperatures get quite down as low, just as that northeasterly has brought some slightly milder air off the sea. But with that northeasterly being cut off uh, Wednesday night into Thursday, I think we're going to see a much more widespread uh, frost. Even many eastern areas could get down to a couple of de degrees uh, below freezing by Thursday morning. So quite a cold night uh, for most places. Uh, Wednesday night into Thursday. So quite a frosty start on Thursday morning and then we see through Thursday this front and little area of low pressure slowly move southwards pushing these areas of, of rain, sleet, snow, some wintry showers uh, southwards um, across the UK during Thursday. Now there is a little bit of uncertainty over this specific area of, of kind of rain, sleet and snow here and exactly where it tracks. The minute it looks like the consensus is generally that it's going to track over parts of northeastern uh, and northern England into parts of the Midlands and Wales before it moves away uh, to the south uh, later on Thursday and into Friday. Parts of East Anglia and southeast England may catch the odd wintry shower, but it looks like they'll largely miss out on this more perhaps persistent area of, of wintry precipitation um, as it moves southwards. So one to keep an eye on over the next couple of days, any changes in the track of that. Uh, but generally another cold night um, on Wednesday into Thursday, uh, Thursday into Friday, sorry, and then through Friday that moves southwards um, and generally clears away to the south by the end of the day on Friday um, and into Saturday we then see high pressure begin to build back in um, to leave things largely dry by the end of Saturday. 
Um, so an unsettled couple of days um, for some central areas as that rain comes south, but generally by the weekend, southern areas are going back to being largely dry. And I think most nights, Thursday night and Friday night and Saturday night as well, we'll see another fairly widespread uh, frost. Uh, we do see some slightly milder air come into uh, Western Scotland by the end of Saturday. You can see that westerly begin to bring some patchy rain uh, into Western Scotland uh, by the end of uh, Saturday, but much colder further south under those clearer skies. And now into the second half of the weekend and the early part of next week. This high will generally transition to be more centred in this kind of area, and that's going to put most of the British Isles into more a westerly or southwesterly flow uh, with high pressure to the south. Um, and this westerly flow to the north. So it will perhaps turn slightly milder um, into next week. And you can see that here in the ensemble forecast. So this is for Bedford, fairly representative of a central location in uh, eastern England. And you can see it's been fairly cold for the past couple of days. This is the 850 millibar temperature. So it's a temperature that's fairly representative of what air mass is over us. So this isn't the temperature of the surface, um, but is representative of what kind of air is affecting us at any one time. So you can see it's been quite cold uh, the next few days and into the weekend, but as we get into that more westerly flow with high pressure to the south of us, looks like we will see temperatures begin to pick up through next week, possibly into the following weekend and the week after, as we tend to stay in that more westerly um, theme to the weather. So turning slightly milder um, through next week. With that slightly milder air and more westerly um, dominance to the weather becomes the slightly higher chance of seeing some rainfall as well. So you can see there's been a few peaks this week, particularly that rain, sleet or snow that might affect some places on Friday, but generally not huge amounts of rain away from those east coasts uh, this week. Next week, um, if we see some fronts toppling over the northern side of that high, could bring some patchy rain. You can see most days here there is the risk of seeing some sort of precipitation. Um, albeit not huge amounts, but it's worth just keeping an eye on the forecast through next week. Um, there could be bits and pieces of rain or showers around uh, for many places. So turning slightly milder, slightly wetter um, through next week and the following weekend. Now, if you'd like more information like that, as well as a standard 10-day forecast uh, for your location, you can sign up to a free two-week trial of our WeatherQuest farming portal. You can see all sorts of information here, probability forecasts, ensemble forecast as well, like I say, the standard 10-day forecast uh, for your lo location. So drop us an email at info at weatherquest.co.uk or you can call our office number if you'd like to find out any more details on that and you can sign up to your two-week free trial of that there. Now looking ahead a bit further afield and out towards the end of the month, uh, this here is a, a mean pressure map for next week. So these colours here show the pressure anomaly, whether it's higher than normal or lower than normal. And these black lines here show uh, the mean pressure, so the average pressure um, through that week. Um, so you can see, as I was mentioning earlier, that high pressure generally out to the south of us. We're into this more broad westerly flow, and generally pressure is above average um, for the time of year over these locations. So we're seeing this westerly flow um, here. That trough of low pressure that had previously been affecting us moving over to the east, so bringing some more unsettled conditions, across Eastern Europe. And you can see that represented in the rainfall as well. These green colours showing wetter than average weather across Eastern Europe, but drier than average under that ridge of high pressure um, further west. And even the UK, even though we're going to see some fronts topple over the edge of that high, and there is the increased risk of rain next week, still overall rainfall amounts will tend to be uh, below average. So turning wetter, but still remaining below average generally for most places. Uh, through next week. The real um, temperature wise we do see it generally staying cold. There's still a lot of cold air around um, across uh, Europe. You can see by the, it's generally by the end of the period that we see some slightly milder air come in. Generally it's still below average through next week. There is that rise in temperature but it generally stays below average until just towards the end of this period, possibly into the week after. So that, although there is that rise in temperature through next week, it is still going to stay chilly. Many places will remain frost free. Um, I think maybe just a few localised frosts, um, but still tending to be slightly below average um, in terms of the temperature. The real shift in the pattern comes the following week, the uh, third week of January, when we see this much more Atlantic influence pattern. These blue colours here showing uh, lower than average pressure. This is suggesting areas of low pressure coming in uh, from the west, quite a mobile 
uh, westerly pattern and generally we'll see below average uh, above average rainfall across these areas these green colors here um, showing that you did see that high pressure that had been previously to the south of us shifting further east and bringing some drier than the normal conditions around the Mediterranean but generally elsewhere across Europe um, away from Scandinavia where there'll also be a bit of ridging but elsewhere across Europe it generally will be above average uh, for the rainfall. The real temperature shift comes uh, next uh, that, that week as well like I said um, that westerly more southwesterly flow is going to bring some milder air with that area of low pressure those areas of low pressure so generally above average temperatures across the UK France, Spain, central and southern areas. Staying colder further north and in the northeast across Scandinavia and parts of Russia, still some cold air and below average temperatures there, but generally elsewhere there is a shift to something milder and slightly more unsettled. Now into the following week, basically an identical pattern it seems at this stage. We've still got this quite active looking broad westerly flow with various, various areas of low pressure pushing in from the west. Still got um, some ridging across uh, southern Europe and the Mediterranean, so it could still remain slightly drier than normal here, uh, but elsewhere fairly wet um, above average rainfall and still a signal for above average temperatures across many southern and western areas with just Scandinavia and northeast Europe um, staying in that colder than average air. So very similar pattern for the fourth week of January as compared to the third week. So to summarise, for us, for the UK, for the next few days, it's going to remain cold with fairly widespread overnight frosts and some wintry uh, rain, sleet or snow at times. Moving into next week, it will turn milder and more unsettled um, as we see uh, some more rainfall for many places. We see some low pressure um, coming through. But the real shift is the week beyond when we see above average temperatures um, and something slightly wetter than average. Um, into the last couple of weeks of January. There is some uncertainty towards the very end of January and into the early part of February with another cold spell not completely out of the question. It's one to keep an eye on as we go forward through the next couple of weeks, but there's a good signal for the uh, last two weeks of January to be milder and wetter than normal before we potentially get to that uh, next cold period. So thanks for watching this week's video. As ever, you can keep up to date with our day-to-day -day forecast on social media. Thanks for watching.